So does anybody have any questions while we're getting set up here? Any questions? I do, yeah. Oh, the most frequent. Yeah, those, those little sites that are like, you know, with uh, 10 point font, 10 or 12 pixel font. Judy, we need to repeat the question. Oh, what's the, what kinds of problems do, um, do we see with websites that kind of make you go, ah? Uh. And I think for me, it's like a site that, ha that has teeny tiny writing or long writing where the content isn't, I mean, one thing, it's like you've got that two to three seconds to make an impression. So if the design sucks, that's bad too. But it's amazing how many people spend so time on writing and then don't make it very, um, don't make it readable or inviting to their uh, readers. And there's ways of setting up your blog. So one of the things I hate um, is where you have a little tiny, on, on the archive page, where you have a little tiny picture and three lines of, of text. And it's usually like, last summer when I was at the beach. So it's nothing even compelling. And you see a bunch of those. And it's and there's nothing to draw you in. So. I suggest, unless you have a really good reason not to, don't use an automatic insert, I mean the, uh, you know, the excerpt for your blog archive page. Use a full blog and then put your own read more, read more tag in there so that you can say, and then she got the knife out, read more. And, <laughs> and the other thing is, when you have your blog page like that, put a photo to the left so your text wraps around it because our, our eyes can't, well, we can read wide text, but not very much of it. And we like more like 300 pixels. So even if you have a sidebar, you still probably have five to 700 pixel content box. Well, if you put a, about a third of that t size, you put a photo and you left ju justify it and wrap that text around, then it makes it easier to read that text. It makes it easier to hook people in. So then you've got a cool title, a great image, text that wraps around, and you end it where you want to end it so that they might click. That way you can see a whole bunch of them, but they aren't just you know, so boring looking that nobody's going to ever click them. So, okay, what do we have here? All right, uh, first of all, whose site is this? What is your site about? Food blog. Okay. Take a quick look. Hopefully, everything's actually fully loaded. It looks like it's fully loaded, right? It's not. Okay, still. Well, one thing I can tell you right now that I mean, and you know, it looks good. Um, these days, I don't know how your site comes up on mobile responsive um, as mobile design, but you know, one of the things clients always ask for is, could you make our logo really big? And um, these days you'll notice most logos aren't this big because when you bring it up on a mobile site, you know, kind of fills up a lot of the page. So, um, you know, you don't really need your logo Big, but it used to be that you would put your logo big all over, you know, all across the header, but that's really changed. Anything that you? Uh, when I'm working with clients, uh, one of the things, one of the questions that I ask them the most is why. I want to know why it is that they want to do the things they're doing or why, why they've made a decision they've made. Uh, so if were you one of my clients, first thing I would ask you is why do people go to your website? Um, I mean, I can easily see that it's a uh, food blog. Um, uh, you're writing recipes for, uh, excuse me, you're, you have recipes up for different, uh, for different food. Uh, so the question is, am I coming here because I know what I want to make already and I found you through Google? Um, am I coming here because I know you for a certain style? Like, oh, this is the best place to go for uh, delicious desserts involving delicious cupcakes, in which case I'll subscribe right now. <laughs> um, or, or, or do you have another reason people are going? So when I find that one reason 
why do people come to you or why do you want them to come to you, um, that helps me decide where to put focus. I don't see, uh, when we scroll to the top of the site, when we load, um, it's a blog. And that might be what you want, but maybe you're trying to sell them on a service or you want them to subscribe to your newsletter or something like that. Uh, if any of those are the case, I don't see an immediate call to action when I load the site. Okay, I think uh, I love the design. And one of the very first things that I saw about it was, I'm sorry, whose website is this? Yes, thank you. I love your, your headshot and the image and your little bio and the about page because when I look at clients' websites and their analytics, the about pages are always one of the top visited pages on a website, especially with a blog. People want to know who's the face behind the website. Um, the next thing that I've really seen do well to take this to the next level is if you had a tab or a button in your navigation that said, if you're new, start here, or welcome. But if there was something where um, new people to know what to do next, um, if you're new to this site, click here, something like that. So people can immediately go there. Maybe you have a roundup of your most popular blog posts, um, what they should do, who this appeals to. I'd love to see that. So I ab absolutely see your perspective. But who do you want to attract with this? What do you want people to get out of it? Like you said, if, uh, do you make, how do you, I won't ask you now, but your profitability, do you make money from the ads? Or are you trying to sell services? Or do you want media placements? Whatever it is, I'd love to see that on there as well. Besides, oh, well, this is a great blog, but what should I get out of it? I'd love to see it spelled out in a welcome and a gathering of your most uh, popular blog posts. Yeah. I think what I would say in that instance is this is a blog post and for people who, I saw you have something about dark chocolate, if you love chocolate and you're a mom and you do this and this is a community and this is for these types and, and getting to know this type of community and the businesses, I think that I would just more so spin it to being about the community and what they're going to get out of it and why this blog versus another cooking blog and then the ads should help reinforce that message. So you can't say click on my ads you know, to give me more money, but you can really reinforce, well, get on my email list or come back, check this blog out often. Um, but the calls to action should drive that purpose. Right, and your website right now is uh, fairly, um, it's very limited color palette. It's very, very flat in the, um, in the colors. That's, that's a good thing for me because uh, that gives me a good place to start. One, obviously, uh, people are drawn to great photography of food. Um, if you go to any great food blog, it's great photos. And you have those, so they stand out on that uh, black and white, very low, uh, very small color palette background. Uh, that also gives me a place to work to figure out whatever that call to action is. Join the newsletter. Come here if you're new to figure out, figure out what you want. Whatever it is, put that in a different color. You know, put that in a color that stands out. When I loaded your page, the first thing I saw was the... Uh, the Jimmy Dean ad on the side because that was the only thing that really had color going for it. So use that to your advantage. Have something that stands out that draws everyone's eye to whatever, whatever first step you want them to take. And I think if people are on this site, as long as they are, you should have a pop-up to try to drive people to your email list so you don't just get tourists, people who come once and will never come again. Try to get them on your newsletter list. I was going to suggest um, that as well. And um, the, because the subscribe to receive updates, you know, you have to be basically beat somebody over the head to, and give them an inducement to make it really easy and fun for them to sign up. So you'll increase your signups if you use Natalie's pop-up ally. Um, and you can make it all different colors and stuff. It's really quite nice. Um, and you can do all sorts of things with it. But make your text in your sidebar a little darker because it, it kind of... You know, hiding your goodness there. Yeah, let's move on to the next one that hasn't. Oh, this one. Well, we know. Let's get. Okay, well, we can't do ABLT. We just launched this last week. This is our Wrote this down. Okay. Just down. Well, we can do a quick one. We can talk about how great, great it is. I didn't know this in advance. I just typed some names in. Okay. Uh, Richard, yeah. you want to say something about what your um... <laughs> let's see? Can I figure that out from the home page? Yes, success. Any type, any custom requirements? <laughs> got it done, delivered. That's Tom Tortorici's words. <laughs> so yay, Tom! And you scroll down here. This is the other thing. 
complex job, bring it on, because Richard is a label expert. You go ahead, criticize it. Oh, no, no, I'm... I'm I would just love, from an SEO perspective, I always look for what is the keyword someone would use to buy your services if they're services. I think they are. Um, so is it just the word labels, or is it labels for businesses who do whatever? I would love to just see a keyword on there once so that I know immediately. So are you a label expert? Is that what people look for? I'd love to see that noun. Are you a label company? Are you a label consultant? I just always look for that noun, that keyword, and to to start targeting for SEO on there too, especially in your title tag. I just looked at the title tag. Uh, unless people type barcode, you know, I'd love to see that as the next level, the next iteration. So next you can consult with Jenny and she'll fix oh. your, <laughs> she'll do a lot of good for you there. One thing that I do like is that you have, um, you have, I'm assuming that all of these go to the same page. So you have like one call to action, but you're repeating it several times. Uh, in several places where people would naturally be drawn to. So first, there are some people who, let's say you're like, I need some, uh, I need labels, I need them now, here's a site, whatever, I'm gonna do it. They have a place to go, you have it offset by a different color, perfect. Um, maybe I need to know a little bit more about your company before I want to you know, actually look at what you do. Know a little more information, have my links, perfect. More information, more links, more. That's uh, that's great to get. Um, you'll notice if you happen to look at people who, uh, if you ever use a service like a heat map service or anything where you can track what people are doing on the page uh, or any of your analytics to see where they're clicking, um, you'll you'll see that some clients, some excuse me, some customers, some visitors to your site uh, need to go a little bit further before they feel comfortable moving on to that next step. So it's good that you give them a lot of reasons to um, to go to that next step. You know, even just clicking here to learn a bit more. Um, right away. Okay, next okay. one. Yep, looks great, though. Do we have another one? Oh, yeah. Okay. We have like 500. I mean, let me just right. put, oh, do we okay. have another oh. one that loaded? Oh, lot. yes, I have a couple. In fact, here, I'm going to load a few more while. Uh, Did you have Jeff. a question? I'm just type a few more in. Pardon? Um, we've got a list here going, so we'll. I'm, um, since we have so many, I'm. Randomly, picking. randomly just choosing some off the page. Another thing, uh, while he's getting that up, I just did a little research this past week about, you know, I, we, anyway, maybe you all don't know the research about sliders and how, you know, 85% or something like that of any kind of click through happens on the first slide and nobody waits around to read all your slides. And they are pretty much of a performance hog. So, um, if you don't really need those sliders, it's probably better not to have one. And then as that kind of lore got pushed, you know, pumped around through the webosphere, um, people started doing, you know, one image. And now you'll find the big whole images on the page. And I wanted to know the research about that because everybody hears about above the fold. And so above the fold used to be really, really, I mean, it is that above the fold people will click, but it used to be really, really important when you had those skinny little, you know, um, skinny little uh, scroll bars. And now people go, so as long as above the fold, it's very clear the action that you want them to take and that there's more, they'll, they'll scroll. And you'll see people like um, Airbnb or is it Dropbox and, uh, you know, a lot of people having those big uh, big images or graphics above the fold. Uh, so whose site is this one right here? Perfect. And uh, I, I'm assuming I can figure out what it's about. What is your site about? Custom website development. Again, I can figure that out pretty quickly, so that's already a plus. Um, so uh, actually, I think this is a great place uh, to bring up something. There are a lot of things... Uh, there are a lot of, um, as, as Donald Rumsfeld would say, unknown unknowns. Those things that you don't even think about or don't even know to think about that can affect how your website works. Uh, for instance, in the bottom left corner, I'm betting that's probably an important pop-up of some sort because one, it exists, two, it's in a different color. Um, I would not have ever thought that, oh yeah, by the way, sometimes people have uh, their little, the little URL pop up in the way that now I can't read it. Uh, there are lots of things that it's, it's really hard to test for, uh, but it's great to have like a rolling development cycle, keep it iterative, go, 
this isn't working here. Let me try moving it somewhere else or removing it or changing how it works. So I mean, I can probably get it to work. Yeah. So that's uh, sign up for your newsletter there. Um, but I might not have ever seen that just because, uh, just because of something that you know you didn't even think of, which I wouldn't have even thought of beforehand. Um, personally, I don't like your little icons or your icons on the home page. Um, I do like the fact that your menu says the word menu, and I kind of want to see those icons say the same thing. Uh, it works for people like us who spend all of our time online, and we know that there's something going on. If I go there, I'm going to hover and figure out something else about it. I don't always expect all of my users to know that. Um, for instance, studies have been done on, on the little uh, hamburger icons. If anyone knows the little icons that do the little three bars to the menu, uh, comparing how those work uh, to when someone just has the word menu on the sidebar. People routinely click the word menu something like four or five times more than they would ever click on those icons. They may be more popular now, but they're still not quite as intuitive. Um, so, it's, I mean, it's great that you're, you know, spelling it out for people. Sometimes you just have to spell out, this is what you should do when you get here. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of space here between the bottom paragraph of your content here and this next area. So, I don't know if you did that on purpose, but I would get a little, you know, have it be a little white space, but maybe not so much. Is this a one-pager? Or are those separate pages? Um, the, one of the very first things I loved, custom websites, I could see immediately that it was very identifiable what you did. That's always the first thing I'm looking for. Can you tell in two seconds what you do? Um, I love having the copy at the bottom that you immediately said grow your business or something about grow your business because too many people start out with we, me, I, us. The second line did say we've, ha you know, we've been in business for 15 years. Um, I loved the internal link to custom websites. Is that what it was? Internal links are so important, so you can immediately take people from the home page to an internal page. Home pages should drive people deeper into the website. So I love that internal link to find out more about you. Even the we've been in business 15 years, whatever that verbiage was, if you have an about section, I, again, I'm a big about page believer that that will sell you. So. You could hyperlink, we've been in business 15 years, and have it drop down to an about section. Jenny, what about yeah. the fact that it's a one-page site? One -pager. I don't <laughs> love one-page websites. Um, just because I want people to land on your internal pages. There's such missed opportunities. If you can't drive people deeper, if there's nothing else to click on, maybe, and especially for SEO. Um, I mean, I know there's ways to optimize a one-page website, but you know, you do want people to land on those internal pages. There's such other opportunities, and with a one-page website, you tend to dilute all your efforts. So, uh, it looks really good, though. It does look good. I definitely know it probably accomplishes the job. So, so kudos. It's a good-looking website. I would love to see the custom websites maybe a little bit bigger, but overall, good job. And you're, um, you do have um, some calls to action to that bring you to your blog post. So you're accomplishing some of that in that way which is great, and you're directing people to the blog. Uh, Gene, do you have a quick question? I do. Um, it seems like the big call to action is uh, request free consult. I guess my question is, is that the consultation Offering something. Even if it's just a free consultation, free estimate, something, offering somebody something for completing an action is, uh, is great for conversion just because they're immediately getting something back, not just sending something off into the void there. You know, they're getting some instant feedback. But one, one thing um, I'll say too, though, is I put a paid consult. My talk it out session is $150, and I get several, you know, I do two or four of them a week and probably 80% conversion into a client. And somebody I was meeting with says, oh, you can do that because everybody knows you. No, I don't know those people that are finding me, you know. So you don't have to wait until you're like, the, the fact that you're saying that makes it look like you're, you get. Yeah, oh, no, no, I mean, not that you're saying that you'll do a two hour consultation, but the, the scarcity makes people appreciate it more. And I heard you say earlier that you get phone calls all day long in the freelancing session, that you're, you're busy all day long. People are calling all day long. So maybe Judy's suggestion could help with that. I started off because if somebody wanted to, people call me and want to pick my brain, I, wouldn't, I would be doing that all day long. So. That 
could be true. That could be true. Then That's maybe a good you need reason. to raise your rates, right? Yeah. yeah. If you're getting more leads than you can handle, raise your rates and then. I'll take this as a good point to say, obviously, everything we say, there are exceptions to those rules. Take it with a grain of salt. No, there's not. Uh, well, things that I say, there are exceptions. Not Jenny, though. Listen, her word is law. Um, let's flip on to the next one. <laughs> um, whose website is this? Okay, so I actually did not. I kind of had an idea when I clicked here when it says, has your online presence uh, made a stern, taken a stern for the worse? Um, it wasn't immediately clear because there are so many things that you could do that that would be an answer to. Uh, for one thing, that was really hard to read. Um, it, it's a little, it's small. In fact, this is a great way to look at your website. If you can't figure it out on a huge screen like this, um, you know, I might just bump it up just a little bit, especially your call to action there. I, I do like it. I, I like the creativity in there, but um, hold on, let me read it again. Has, has your online presence taken a stern for the worse? I like that, but I think that, and I'm sorry, who am I looking at? Yes, thank you. I think that you could identify your audience's pain points a little bit more. Like, well, what does that look like when it's taken a stern for the worse? So are they, so what does that look like? What are the pain points? Like they, they leads have dried up or their competitors are beating them all on Google. Like I'd like to see like you specifically say what it is that has turned so bad for them that they need you. Um, I don't know how you could say that all there, but that's kind of, I like them to self-identify a little bit more quickly with, well, what does that mean and why do they need you? Google it. Google it. There's lots of Google research on sliders. Uh, the question is, is there a place that you can get um, industry resources and stats on conversion rates? Yeah. Notre Dame did, um, that's one that I was reading the other day, did, um, there's actually, I don't know if they did the article, but it's about their website. Um, but I just Google stuff, um, Nielsen stuff, you just Google user interface. Um, All of the industry leaders in, um, in growth, so the KISS Metrics blog, the Moz blog, um, Neil Patel's blog, his personal one. Um, there's a, most, most anybody whose company uh, does that, they'll, they'll have good resources for it. Um, on, I don't, I'm not a fan of the font. It's really close to Comic Sans or something, which feels like everything's so clean and modern up here, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, that font for your portfolio is not my favorite. Um, I might I, I second that in that um, it doesn't feel like there's one voice here. It doesn't feel like there's one um, identity being shared. Uh, I like to keep things, uh, when we work on branding for our clients, we try to, uh, we work on not just, you know, saying branding is a logo. It's not. There's so many other things that go into play. Um, and that includes the voice, the tone that they're putting out uh, across all across all media that they use. Uh, so having one tone throughout the site would, um, it, it helps you have one way for people to recognize you, immediately see this is something that you've done. Uh, but then it also gives you that point where if you happen to go off brand, then it's notable. You know, it's something that happens to be, oh, this is out of character for whatever reason. Is this just bad? Or is it that they're trying to say something different here? And if you look at this, this view right here, you don't have the thing about the websites up here. And then it says our portfolio. And then I don't know, especially because you've got that great picture of the family, I don't know if you're a photographer or not. So again, I've, I've lost it. So maybe you're, you could put something instead of our portfolio, see our web designs or something. But, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just some welcoming copy to kind of land visitors and, and have them understand, well, who you are and what do you do and who do you serve and, you know, is it creative companies? Is it B2C? Because you have beautiful work. I love your, your imagery, but I love some kind of copy on the homepage so that people can kind of understand where they are and what they should do next. But, it, you know, it's beautiful. I just would love to see um, 
you give them direction. Don't leave it up to chance. Don't ever leave it up to chance that someone will know what exactly they should do. You should always tell people, um, we do this, take a look at our portfolio, then come look at this, then check out our expertise. You know, so just don't leave it up to chance or have it imply that people will know what to do. So I love a little bit of copy to help them get to the next step. Where, I, I like that. Do you? I do. I just don't know if it's you know, on Just, uh, you know, it makes it more usable because sometimes if you've got a long page, especially, and you don't have that and it goes away, how are you ever going to get back to anywhere, you know, without? So I, I really like them. So whose website is this? Nobody's owning it. I'm blind. Urban guitar legend. Uh, Elliot Holden. Well, you know. I'm sorry if I can't see you. Um, I will say, uh, oh, do you have something to say? No, I was going to say if he's not here, we should go to someone Oh, well, is. I want to say one real quick thing about it. Um, as I said, most of the things, except for things that Jenny says, the things that I say are rules that can be broken. Um, <laughs> and there are a few cases where the slider rule uh, does not take into effect for me. Those are things where it's... Um, where those aren't calls to action, there are specific actions you want people to take. But when it's more, when it's more of a content sharing, you know, news websites do them often. If I'm a photographer, I see it's okay to have a few pieces going because I'm not telling someone to click on that thing. Uh, so this one is clearly a store, um, and it looks like they have some videos that go along with it. So this I'm okay with having that because it kind of gives people a little overview. You know, but they're that, more like. A, but the one that was up when we first looked at it was like newspaper articles, and I had to say, I had to stop and look at it. I'm trying to get it back for several minutes. Not that, minutes. that is it true. Felt yeah, like first minutes. one was different. I'm like, what is this? Is it just text? Like this. This is what I saw at the beginning, and it was completely, you know, it, there's a book called Don't Make Me Think. <laughs> this, this made me like stop and scratch my head, so I would get rid of this. If you don't have time to read the book, I think the title of the book sums it up quite well. Don't make me think. <laughs> this is two bees in a pod. DIY what? Home decor blog. DIY home decor blog. Are we, is this... Is that fully loaded? We just want to confirm that everything loaded? Okay. So this is kind of, is this, it looks like it's fuzzy or, you know, kind of in uh, like a hover state or something. So I wasn't sure. That's why we were wondering if it loaded. Is that, that's how it's supposed to be? Why? <laughs> Well, I'm looking at it here, little, and I'm, I'm like thinking that it's not, it's my computer's broken. It, well, it's crisp, but it has a, you know, it has a, it's washed. And so I'm, usually when you put a wash over it, it's like you, you want to hover over it and do something, or it, it comes up that way after it's you know, one way or the other. I think for me, um, do-it-yourself home decor blog, that's exactly what I would want to see there above the fold on the home page because I didn't know what the site was. Um, so again, that's your keyword, I think, almost home decor blog. And again, I always want to see it super simple, what it is you are on there to, again, help people self-identify. And then next, I love the hire us because that's always what I'm looking for when people say they don't get enough leads to their website. Again, you're a blog, but then also you have services for hire. But it states it right there that people can hire you. So I love that, and I love the about. So I love the little navigation, but everything I think they said is correct too. But I would definitely state immediately what it is you guys do. And I, I have to second the hire us. Too many people don't give anybody a way of figuring out how to work with them. And the more you can do that, the more work you'll get. Duh. So one way I found to... Um, uh, I'm going to steal, uh, steal a Picasso quote here. Good artists uh, borrow, great artists steal. I probably got that wrong because I don't steal very well, I guess. Um, I, I, I like to see what people who do something similar to what you're doing and are very good at it, how they, uh, how they do it. So an example, you don't have to do this, but an example of how I might style a site like yours, I'd probably look at Pinterest and try something like that. 
Why would I go with Pinterest? I know it's a very popular social network. There's tens of millions of people who use it. So that means that you already have a built-in audience of people who know the navigation, who know the structure, the style, the layout. They know how to use a website like that. Uh, it's, it's, a way to, uh, it's a way to take ideas that companies that have spent a lot of time optimizing everything and taking all the best things that all these bigger companies have done. Um, so one, you get those good ideas, and two, you have people who come in going, oh, okay, I've seen Pinterest before. Uh, I'm, I'm using Pinterest as an example because I figured there's probably an overlap in audience here. Um, so that they would be able to instantly know how to navigate the website. Um, you you want to load up some more for us? Is that, there should be a And just something there. positive in case none of us have said anything positive yet. It's really cute. It, it looks nice. I'd like to go back and read it. Well, so, good job. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Here, I'll load a few more. Okay, so um, room and board. Room to board. So I'm going to load really quick. And then you want to stand up and tell, it, tell us what it is? The hostel and surf school in Costa Rica. Woo! Let me look at it. Sorry, I'll pull Whoops. up in just a moment. I'm it's gone. <laughs> Does it say that specifically above the fold? Okay. It's it. Okay. It does. Hostel and service. Oh, per perfect. Good. Okay. I, I talked to her beforehand, and I love her. Um, I had to ask and make sure that that was a font, the, the navigation buttons, but it, this is especially for, you know, kind of younger people. I mean, not that they're the only people that use hostels, but she was saying that they're a young crowd. And I liked the font, and it looked like they were almost, you know, custom-made buttons, but it's using a Google font. How do you scroll? Yeah, it's a good way to, um, it's a good way to target a specific audience, because um, you do usually figure people who are using a hostel are a younger crowd. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking the more adventurous types, you know, people who are okay with that kind of thing. And it, uh, the, the branding speaks to that. It's, it's more, um, you know, you're going on this trip, this amazing far-off journey or something. And, and one thing, too, um, it looks super cool. I would like to go. But I would immediately um, put some social proof on there. Like, I mean, if, do people pay through this site or they reach out to you? But absolutely. Um, I think when you have this kind of a business where it's, it's not like a big leap, but it kind of is. Like they want to know you're legit and you're not going to steal all their money. So if you're a better business bureau, if you take credit cards, if you have testimonials, I'd love to immediately see some social proof so that uh, it solidifies and keeps people on the page. Do you Definitely. Come, do you come up, at, are you on TripAdvisor? Oh, I would get that higher up. I, I would definitely your site get it before today, and I didn't see it. The top button. Yeah, nobody will ever find that. No. It's true. Social proof is uh, is very important. Uh, people are much more likely to make a purchase if somebody else that they know recommended it to them first. And this is a way to kind of bypass that. So it may not have been, you know, my friend specifically who stayed here and said, oh, you should stay there. But if I see that other people have, I'm more like, you know, it's like when you buy something online, you look at reviews first. Ten people reviewed this versus 100 reviewed this one. I want the one that 100 people bought. That you're two out of 52 on TripAdvisor. I would say that somewhere. Like maybe your TripAdvisor doodad widget isn't up there. But, you know, that would be a really good thing to, like, point out up here and then link to the rest of the TripAdvisor. And, and another thing, and, and I talk about this in my SEO talk later, not to plug that too much, but um, Google, to, to get ranked high, one of the questions that they ask themselves, that they tell businesses ask themselves is, would you give this site your credit card? If the answer is absolutely yes, right off the bat, then that sends really good signals and carries off to other things. So just immediately, I want people to know that if they did give this site their credit card, if they had to buy or reserve or put down a deposit, that the answer is without a doubt, yes, this site looks so legit. So again, I think those social proof elements like are huge. 
Tying into that, the proof of, uh, of the safety and security proof is also important. People are more likely to enter the credit card info if you have, uh, you know, seals that say, like, I am, you know, preferably ones that you actually earned uh, that say that I, uh, you know, uh, we have this uh, encryption here and, you know, we use this service, something that says, you know, you can trust us with your money. I, I know that you're using a reservation system that's not on your site, so your site doesn't have to be HTTPS. But, right, so, but I think in this case, and I have a bed and breakfast site, and mine isn't either, so. But um, it just costs, it's just minimal cost, and it, may, it does, it's surprising how many people care about that. So even though you're not collecting money, it might be worth you doing. Google yes. Google rank higher for secure yeah. sites, yes. Okay. So I'm making my list to Is this do the next this. site? This is the next oh, site. Jason. I wonder whose site this is. Would you like to tell us what you do? He helps agency owners get to the next level. Excellent. I will click on that later. What kind of agencies? Okay, first of all, I, I really like the start of this page. Um, I'll break down the reasons I like it. You uh, ask a question, you're immediately drawing someone in. You're probably like, I know all this stuff, so I'd fit it there. Whatever. You're drawing people in right away. Um, you're giving them an immediate response to that question. And then you are giving them a very, very uh, obvious call to action, which also is kind of... Um, it's like you're sharing some esoteric knowledge here, you know, agency secrets revealed. Like, I want to click on that because it's, you know, it's not just like, hey, learn what I did. It's like, no, we're going to peel back the layers if I show the secrets. So I really like the way that you're drawing people in. Um, I would like, I don't know if it's one of those responsive things that changes on, depending on what site, size screen, but the seven or eight, like, I'm just, like, drawn to this big figure agency. What? And if you put the seven or eight figure agency all on one line, it's more readable. But I, I think it does, I, I love that the contrasting uh, button and um, that you're revealing your agency secrets. If anyone has a website that is not responsive right now, next month Google is uh, doing more changes to the algorithm. I see some nodding people know this, that, um, that they are going to start ranking sites higher based on how responsive they are, how, how, how easily able they are to use on mobile sites. April 21st, see? Hard deadline. Be responsive. Jason, you have your cat in the video. That's a big plus. <laughs> um. you, you're pandering to the cat owners? <laughs> You can have cats, I have dogs. I think that videos, when, you're, when you have your own agency, or pro, when it's like when you are the business, if you have something that really lets people know who it is, because a lot of people would rather work with somebody than some like anonymous uh, agency. So I love that you have your video and you know you, your personality comes across. Um, that works. Jason, have you ever thought about having a case studies tab at the top? I mean, you have awesome client stories. I would love to see that like immediately because everybody always wants to get nosy and find out, you know, what other people have done the before and afters. And I know that's what you do, right? You want people to envision what it is, what's life like now and what could it be like. So if those are hidden, I would definitely try to put them more prominently. And then again, what you do that everybody else that just for you to know is he's flipped the megaphone almost in the copywriting world. When you talk about me, you, you know, my services or my company or we've done this and I've done that, my copywriting mentor said you're weeing all over yourself. You have to flip the megaphone and say you need this and this is your world right now and this is what's going on and then we can help. So he says you, so that word you is really important. So if everybody is, you're only talking about yourself, you flip the megaphone. So you've done a really good job of that. Yeah. And you, sh you should also sign up for his mailing list because he does a really great job on, on um, dripping out content and making it nearly impossible not to do what he says. We need maybe like two more? Yeah. Oh, this is so much fun. Let's just stay in here. I think the next speaker might not like that. I don't, I would not like, 
Okay. This oh, right, right. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is. She's already um, on stage, so. Yeah. It's NFCBC. I don't know. NFL Christian NF Base. Bass. Bass. <laughs> bass. Sorry. Bass. Oh, bass. bass. Is that yours? Oh, bass. Well, that would be a problem, right? Uh, that could just be. That could Maybe just be because it was blue. <laughs> this um, is actually. Um, sorry, I want to cut in really quick. This is actually a good uh, point that uh, you don't know how your users are going to see your site. Uh, so try a lot of ways, test sites before you load them. Um, I know Chrome has a tool built in. Not only can you view mobile versions of the site, but you can also have it fake throttling the site so that you're looking at it like on a really low. Uh, quality, uh, you know, internet connection. Um, look to see how users who, let's say, are at a conference and might not be able to load it quickly or have poor internet service or something might see your site first. You want to get that stuff loading very quickly. I'm not quite sure. I know it's about fish, but I'm not sure if you're supposed to pray for fish <laughs> or exactly how they're related and what you want people to do. It's not clear at all. No, the fish play football. The NFL. fish play football. Oh, it's football's NFL. in there too? Yes. I think because of the URL, it could be three different yeah, things. This, this is pre release, but. Uh, but the copy, do you know what you would say? Do you know what your keyword is? Uh, in, your in elevator case, pitch? In the case of the prayer request, it's, it's a general prayer request uh, form to post uh, that, that the client has requested. You know, again, oh, the, so, this is very much flying through. Oh, the design is good. I just wanted to know the copy. Like, what do they do? Is this a fishing it's excursion? Quite on, on your oh, that is. Are that you is sure very different. They got the right URL. Is that a test URL? Well, when I go here, um, how would I find uh, the prayer request form? Where would be? I see there's a link at the top. Right here. And then down there, there's another oh, no, one. No, but that doesn't request it. It doesn't link to it. Right here, it does. Anyway, you need to make sure, even if you're, you know, this is a thing. Even if your clients ask you to do something just how they want it, it, I think it's really, really up to us to let them know when it's not a good idea. And I think a lot of people are like nervous to tell their clients what, what works and doesn't work. And that's why it's great to have the research backing you up. But it works different. I'm sure you did. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can only go so far, and then you give your client the website, and then they do something schlocky, and then I take it off my portfolio. <laughs> David, <laughs> what did you say in your freelancing talk earlier? We don't like saying the client is always right. Right, the client is not always right. Um, there you go. That's the only clap I need. Um, <laughs> No, I, I think uh, it is important. It, you might be, uh, you know, you, I don't know whether you are or not, but it's true, you might be nervous to suggest changes to what a client wants you to do. A client does not hire me to build them a website. They hire me for all of the years of experience and expertise. All of the time I take doing things like this, coming here shows that you're spending a lot more focus on it than all the people who aren't here today or, you know, come to the events. Um, you're, they're paying you for all of these other things that you do that you can make the most informed decision for them when it comes time to build their website. Um, this is that media chick, and who, who's, the, who's the media chick? Oh, you're not bad looking. You, your picture's not on here. I thought you must be really ugly. <laughs> Just doing voiceovers, and you didn't want anybody to see what you look like. Said it would be honest. Put your picture on the front, and get a professional. Talk to that. Talk to our photographer. Yeah, get some professional pictures. You saw Natalie's pictures on her, that she had. Whoa, makes a huge difference. And then, again, if your, your big thing is you provide services, I would take out that pages sidebar column because that's redundant. I would put a big old client testimonial right there. Again, social proof. 
Um, and then, yeah, I would love to see that header image with you in it, just because, again, people want to know the face behind the business. Um, and you're, is your about very prominent? Okay, good. So, yeah, that duplicate pages thing, yeah. And one, one thing on your front page copy, instead of going right into your services, like Jason did, use some uh, customer-centric words and tell them why, you know, what kind of issue can you solve for them, I mean, using, you know, their pain points. Because they can always, you know, the, anybody that's looking for voiceover, they'll get to your services if you catch them and capture their interest by your picture and what you're saying there. Do we, I think we're, yeah, I think this will be we're last we have one. to stop now. Uh, my last thought on your site, or, okay. sorry, my last thought on your site is uh, treat it as if, um, for, for most of my, your, yours is a bit better case for this than some of the other sites. Uh, treat it like you're applying for a job and this is your resume. Do you want to hand someone like a 10 page document or do you want to have the one pager that has your greatest hits on it that you know I can totally rock it. Uh, you want to have just the things that will immediately catch people's attention. Um, you can save like a full page for all of the services you have. I see you have them broken down, which is good, but just put like the top things you've done right away. Another one thing uh, before we leave is this kind of dawned on me that a lot of people in here are new and starting out building sites and or else you're new in business and you've done your own site and that's fabulous. But I look back and I see the sites that I did originally and I'm like, Woo. Um, and so it's worth it to go pay a hundred bucks or 150 bucks or whatever it is to somebody once you've done it to get this kind of advice to r r ratchet it up a few notches. So, so just because we're ending the people that, you know, did this, there's lots of experts here that would be more than willing to, and go to the happiness bar go to the and happiness ask bar. there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.